Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and we are today talking about a very sensitive topic that not everyone wants to talk about it and even if they know they have this fear, um, they just feel very self-conscious and not everyone can recognize it as a fear, right? But I'm here to tell you that and you are at the comfort of your home to, to look at this video, to watch it and to really think about whether you have it or not and what can you do about it. It's a fear of intimacy, right? And I'm not talking about like low, low sexual drive, right? No, that's not my specialization, right? Um, I specialize, specialize in fears and phobias, so I'm talking about fear of intimacy, this mental right? Psychological block that we have that gives us so many symptoms and you will be surprised to what extent your mind can go to protect you. Because with the fear of intimacy, your mind, like the, it sees your, um, the intimacy as a big threat, right? Um, so that's why it can go to very extreme methods and, and you know, tools um, to give you, the, to push you back away, to push you away from it, right? Um, in the majority of cases, fear of intimacy, um, it caused by trauma from childhood, sexual trauma, right? In some cases, it can be caused by, you know, surgeries or uh, maybe some traumatic labors, right? Like things like that. However, in majority of cases, um, and I'll tell you why, um, fear of intimacy can have some religious, of course, roots, but as well as uh, sexual abuse, physical abuse as well, right? And uh, fear of intimacy has no underlying health conditions, like right? Like there is no imbalance of hormones or there is no kind of like side effects of medication that can, for example, affect the low uh, sexual drive, right? But it's actually a fear of intimacy. The, the thought about going or stepping into the, this kind of a vulnerable state of, of being, right? Where you are in intimate relationship, it can cause you a big physical and mental uh, symptoms. So what are the symptoms? Usually it's avoiding. Your first symptom in fear of intimacy is avoiding. Avoiding um, intimate relationship at any cost. Even if you're married, even if you have been in the relationship for years and years and years, right? You will be avoiding it, right? So excuses. Um, you know, sometimes your body doesn't know how to protect itself, so it will even come up with illnesses. You know, you can even get, become sick because of this fear. And that's, that's real. I had, a, I had clients who, um, who were so afraid of intimacy that they would be in this fight or flight mode, right, still, because of the abuse, of course. And they would come up, like their body wants to protect them so much that they, it comes up with illnesses, so you don't have... Um, you don't you don't have to go into the intimate relationship with your partner, so that fear can cause that. Uh, flashbacks, so whenever a touch, a feel, or you know you start to kiss your partner and you have flashbacks from your past. If you had an abuse in the past, it will cause the the flashbacks, triggers. So sometimes one word one kind of a situation, right? Um, even starting like, you know, to make up, to make out with your, with your boyfriend or, you know, your husband or your partner, right? Can cause you to get triggered, right? Because your mind will see that as a very, as a potential life-threatening condition, right? Uh, so it will draw you away from it, by giving you, you know, by giving you physical symptoms, anxiety, panic attacks, you know, sometimes we just zone out, you know, and just like we did when we were children, right? So many times, um, you know, you come in out of your body even, you know, so um, there are people who, for example, a partner will tell another partner that I, we were, we were having sex, but you were not there, 
you were like, you were absolutely zoned out. Um, sometimes people just shut down. They, they understand that they have to do that because of obligations. And um, they feel like they, um, but they zone out, they shut down, you know, or they come out of their body. You have this experience where you're looking at yourself from, from the outside of your body, right? That's, that's what happens during the trauma to save you, you know? So another one is loss of control. We are, when we, lo when we lose control in childhood, we make the belief that I have to do anything, everything to be in control and intimate relationship it is out of control. It is being vulnerable. It is trusting someone, right? And that's something that you, that a person might not be used to. So they will be protected by this fear. Fear is to protect you. It's not to cause you, it actually harms you and, and sometimes even punishes you, but it's actually to protect you, right? Um, also, you can even be so afraid of, of intimacy that you don't build any relationship at all. So people stay single and people stay, um, you know, by themselves. They don't even go into relationship, though they might want, but they don't know how to do that because the mere thought of, of intimacy can just, you know, spiral them back into the, into the panic mode or anxiety or worry, right? And overthinking. Um, what are the roots and the causes? As I said, in majority of cases, the root, the cause of the fear of intimacy is sexual abuse, sometimes physical abuse, right? This is the biggest one. However, there are some other ones. For example, self-confidence, right? For example, you had a very painful traumatic labor when you were given birth to a child um, and then you just kind of made that belief that, oh my God, I don't want to go through that anymore. And ha being intimate with someone means that you can get pregnant. That's for women, right? And they can get really, you know, anxious about, um, about having intimate relationship with, with their partner in the future, right? That happens. Also, religious views. You, a, a big, big reason for the fear of intimacy, right? Because some religions are very strict about that and they put a lot of beliefs, you know, they kind of like, you know, cushion you with the beliefs about around, around family, intimacy, sexuality, sensuality, like, like lots of beliefs that the person actually gets so confused that they became fearful. That happens as well. Uh, past experiences, so abusive husbands, abusive parents, right, can also trigger that fear. Uh, as I said, fear is always to keep you safe. So if you want to overcome this fear, only if you want, because not everyone wants to, some people are okay. If you want to, if it's actually bringing you a lot of discomfort, you know, and, and a lot of struggles in life, you know, one thing you can do is gaining back power, which, what, what does it mean? If you had an abuse in the childhood, you need to gain your power back by processing that trauma. Shutting it down, you know, burning it in the past, you know, uh, closing it behind the closed door, you know, doesn't help. Like, doesn't help. If you feel like, oh, I'm just going to forget about it. I'm just going to leave it in the past. Yes, you can leave it in the past after you process that. That's very important. If not, you have to gain your power back. It is possible with the help of therapy, right? It is possible. I usually use, we, I have tools, right, that I use with my clients to, so they can gain that power back and they can regain back their confidence, right? And their self-belief and they can work through their trust, trust issues, right? Another one, working with confidence, right? Working with self-confidence because self-confidence is the first thing that shuts down during any traumatic event, whether it was in a childhood or in your adulthood. So these are two steps that you need to do. Uh, the third step is communication. Communication. If you trust your pet, if you already have a partner and you trust your partner, communicate with him. By the way, by statistics, 70% of partners don't know about the abuse of their own um, of their partner in the, in, the, in the childhood. They just don't know because there is no communication. Without the communication, 
the person will not understand you. So there is always communication. So the third way to work through this is communicating your struggles, your fears, your phobias, right? Your insecurities that will help for sure to build a stronger relationship with yourself and with your partner. So these are the roots and the causes of the fear of intimacy. Um, if you have any questions, please comment below. I'll be happy to answer all of them. And I wish you all the best. Be healthy physically and mentally. Bye.